So Julia, you can come to the stage now. So he's a PhD candidate in philosophy and cognitive science in co tutel between the EHESS in Paris, France, and the University of Granada in Spain. His presentation is entitled On Pure Consciousness of Autopoietic Machines. Well, thanks for the organization of this event. So, um, so I'm, going to, I'm going just to start my presentation. Um, Perhaps the um, the topic of my presentation would be more to understand philosophically and experimentally what we understand by top-down causation in relation to self-consciousness. So for this purpose, uh, I am, the presentation is divided in five sections. So first I'm going to to talk about what is the objective of this research and a, a working concept of abstraction. The second section is about the evidence and what do we understand by immediate contact to reality through mental representations and actions. So and the third section is about the concept of autopoietic machine and what is to be a cause of the self. So the further section is about a description of what is pure consciousness and the different levels of analysis that I'm going to, to develop, and finally, the experiments. So, so this research project will experiment with the simplest form of conscious experience of which humans are capable of or minimal phenomenal experience. Firstly, to prove its empirical existence. Secondly, to disentangle its core causal factors. And thirdly, to attest its content properties. Deleting and maximizing the unit of identification. The unit of identification is the phenomenal uh, space to, to which we direct our notion of the self and other selves. So, and deleting and maximizing the unit of identification are the two channels for analyzing empirically the MPE within the model of ascending reticular activation system, minimal phenomenal selfhood, and minimal phenomenal experience, which are mainly the thresholds of electrical frequencies of the brain during the analyzed states, their correlations and simulations and subjective reports. Mm. The hypothesis is that pure consciousness as the source of epistemic self-causation can be physiologically isolated in non-dual forms of awareness such as lucid brainless sleep. This is a, an entire a whole topic about non-sensory and non-motor, but nonetheless cognitive state, which would change our understanding of higher order, order um, cognitive abilities, if it is the case. So, and the questions are, does an all-pervading form of conscious experience exist? Which phenomenal characteristics does pure consciousness entail? What is the nature of phenomenality? So, uh, the plausibility for the, of the, these two experiments that I'm going to talk at the end of the presentation is, are uh, based on the experiments by Ferrarelli, Massimini, and, the, and in general, the research by Marxist. And here I'm going to talk specifically about one of the uh, experiments that Sust did in Switzerland. And it's about learning while in um, deep sleep, which is supposed to be in a state non mode. Well, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, in a bit, but it's supposed to be a non sensory and non motor state, which is uh, an interesting case of an exception of learning without such inputs. So, and the description of this experiment, I'm going just to read it. So, learning while asleep is a dream of mankind, but it's often deemed impossible because sleep lacks the conscious awareness and neurochemical milieu thought to be necessary for learning. Current evidence for sleep learning in humans is inconclusive. To explore conditions under which verbal learning might occur, 
we hypothesized that peaks of slope waves would be conducive to verbal learning because the peaks define periods of neural excitability. While in a slow wave sleep during a nap, um, sorry, <laughs> a series of word, of word pairs com comprising pseudo words, e.g. Tofa and an actual German word, an actual German word, e.g. house, were played to young German speaking women and men. When the presentation of, of the second word of a pair, house related to Tofa house, uh, coincided with an ongoing slow wave peak, the chances increased that a new semantic association between the pair had been formed and retained. Sleep form association translated into awake ones where they guided first choices on an implicit memory test. So reactivations of the sleep form association were mirrored by brain activation increases measured with fMRI, fMRI in cortical language areas and the hippocampus a brain structure critical for relating binding, relational binding. And so they infer that implicit relational binding had occurred during peaks of slow oscillations, recreating a hippocampal neocortical network comparable to vocabulary learning in the waking state. This is uh, really interesting that because for instance, in the case of Ferrarelli and Massimini, these other experiments, they found that um, experienced meditator, meditators, uh, while being in deep sleep, where um, they, so they analyzed their brain waves and they found gamma oscillations during uh, deep sleep of uh, these meditators, which are supposed to be um, the uh, markers of cognitive uh, abilities. Well, so more as so this is the case. So now um, I'm going just to briefly uh, describe this working concept of abstraction, which is based on two different uh, influences. On the one hand is the allocentric and egocentric maps of the experience and realized by well, research by Georgi Busaki, which is based mainly the more perspective of an object or landscape or or situation we have, the more abstract it turns. That's on, on the one hand. And the other hand is the maybe the, the most uh, uh, spread concept, is, and it's the inference of general rules with few parameters that has been used, to, for instance, by Francois Collette. So and now the second section of the presentation. Um, So here, there is a quotation by Max Termark, Techmark, and that I like whenever I talk about how experience may be composed. So an observer can, al can always decompose the world into three subsystems. The, the degrees of freedom corresponding to her subjective perceptions, the degrees of freedom being studied, and the environment. So and here in this chart, I, di I divided in to more to clarify the purpose of the experiment is there is this monadic self causality, there is a net of interactions, and there is a witness consciousness, which is um, the a synonym of the concept of pure consciousness. So, um, I hear a sound. Is there somebody? To, the microbe somebody is coming in. Okay. Um, so, um, it's still there, but no, anyways. So, and um, for, for this purpose of researching pure consciousness, it, it's important to divide mental representations from mental actions. Because um, most of the time, these definitions are simply collapsed. So, and first we have the phenomen phenomenal self model that has phenomenal contents, and some uh, systems have intentional contents in regard to those phenomenal contents. And for this, we 
also it has been described the the phenomenal model of intentional relation and the epistemic agent model and these have are normally related to what's being called uh, mental actions that it's the purpose of the research um, for pure consciousness which so the, the main goal of uh, pure in, of this research, research is to find the epistemic self causation of uh, human beings uh, and it's also related to the concept of insight, lucidity, and sense of effort. And these are divided between mental autonomy and rational autonomy. So in the case of mental autonomy, we have first order mental action, which is uh, divided in two. So it's attentional agency, it's the ability to control one's focus of attention and cognitive agency. So the ability to control goal task, deliberate, deliberate thought. On the other hand, we have the rational autonomy, which is second order mental actions. So it's better control is imposing of rules of, on one's mental behavior and symbolic reasoning process. So it's global input output function to maximize a specific fitness criterion. So mental actions shape a self, a self representation of ongoing attentional agency and the ability to act as an epistemic agent, which is important for the sense of embodiment. The representation of this ability suffices to appearance of the of the first person perspective. This um, the best example to divide between mental representations and mental actions is. Uh, the distinction between mindfulness and mind wandering. We can have mental representations in mind wandering, but we cannot have mm, um, um, mental representations during mindfulness. Uh, at least the non dual version of the mindfulness. Jonas, you can mute yourself. Yes, there's a micro over there. Okay. So um, this is the third section is just briefly the definition of autoprojective machine, which is, which is a cause of the self is based on the uh, on the theories of inactivism and neurophenomenology. And simply is a, a unified cause of the self, which has autoprojective organization that it creates its own self. It specifies its own boundaries in the process of server production and intrinsic attributes. This is important because normally it's it's it has been thought that um, to give an account of consciousness is by observation. So and that's that creates more or less uh, some misunderstandings. So hypothetically, all autopoietic systems capable of autonomous exchange of signals would be conscious, but embodiment is necessary as physical way to exchange signals. So, and this is just to, to give an example that this type of complex organization may appear in different scales of description that it's not only be, um, restricted to the human one, which makes the thing more difficult in to to grasp if there are other types of possible causalities that other systems could uh, realize. So, and now the, the the description of what is actually pure consciousness. So, and it's to witness an open space for epistemic availability. And on the on the left side, the the definitions are is are that it's a state of a non-cognitive state, contentless or empty, non-sensory, a perspectival, non-motor, non-egoic, and a temporal. And on the right side, we have that it's the basis of all knowing, the pure element of awareness, self nominous different from the empirical individual. This has been uh, fully researched by also not only by Neos, this neuroscientists that I mentioned, but also in Indian philosophy and and all, uh, some of the meditative traditions in Buddhism. So PC as a non-dual form of awareness is a representational state. This sense of representational can be this 
can be discussed. It's just, obviously it's the, it's the thing that it's planned to be discussed. A state of pure presence and the functional property of tonic alertness. So this uh, I more or less I already mentioned that some of the methodologies that I, that we are using is the Jerks dot that's on law and the essential reticular activation system to uh, analyze the levels of arousal. Mm -hmm. So, and Thomas Metzinger, the, the philosopher, the German philosopher did this uh, psychometric instrument in order to analyze pure consciousness. So there are six constraints, this wake, wake for, and, and how to understand those. So it's wakefulness, and the phenomenal quality of tonic alertness, low complexity of reportable content, content an, absence, an absence of high level symbolic mental content, but also perceptual sensory motor of emotional content. Self luminosity, a phenomenal property of MPE, typically described as radiance and brilliance or the clear light of primordial awareness. Introspective availability, we can sometimes active lead direct introspective attention to MPE, and we can distinguish possible states by the degree of actually ongoing access. Epistemicity, as MPE is an epistemic relation, awareness of, if MPE is a sexually introspective, that's also one of the things that uh, we would like to find out. Um, then we would predict a distinct phenomenal character of epistemicity or subjective confidence. Transparency of uh, opacity, like all other phenomenal representations, MPE can vary along a spectrum of opacity and transparency. It can be experienced as representation or not. So, on the levels of analysis, and uh, in the ARA of the ARAS model, are and that and those are based on physical, functional, and phenomenological levels of analysis. So it's arousal, a uh, purely physical boundary condition determining the depth of information processing available to the organism as a wall and a vital parameter that must be predictably controlled. Tonic alert alertness, a causal function resulting from the successful control of arousal over longer periods of time in the absence of an external cue and a functional property, causally enabling capacities like orientation, executive control, attention, and epistemic agency on, on the mental level. Wakefulness, a representation of tonic alertness and the major and the major component of the phenomenal character of the MPE, which is the primary dimension of phenomenal state space. Here is just to, to to have an example of the types of uh, um, body illusory perceptions. And on the left side, we have autoscopic hallucination, the autoscopy, out of body experience, and the type of uh, phenomenal illusions, and the neural correlates on the right. And this is uh, just a multi dimensional ch chart of how these uh, global states of consciousness and self loss can be analyzed. And now the experiment. Mm. So the first one is on lucidity during deep sleep or an exploration of the physiological and phenomenological threshold for the emergence of the MPE. And pure consciousness can be hypothetic, well, it can be hypothetically isolated during lucid dreamless sleep. According to meditative traditions, mainly non dual, I didn't write that. Um, um, PC is reachable through trained meditation to witness pure presence without phenomenal boundaries. And the question is whether it's possible to have cognitive access to that state, access consciousness, and prove it under a third person perspective or to depict empirically what it's like to be in lucid deep sleep which is phenomenal consciousness. Does consciousness depend on observation, which is also part of the whole thing between observation and intrinsic attributes? And does lucid dreamless sleep require, require large scale gamma activity? 
which is also one of the outcomes of uh, Ferrarelli's research. So the description of the experiment. The candidates experienced meditators will listen to a musical pattern in the electrical peaks of a slow wave sleep. This pattern will be composed based, based on their correlations to on their correlation to neural markers of high cognitive processes as gamma oscillations. Once awake, they will describe freely their experience while in lucid dreamless sleep before listening various musical patterns in order to test if they can recognize the one previously, previously applied to them. The sense of describe freely is that uh, we won't get any, any set of options. So good experience some meditators recognize the musical patterns that they attended when being in slow wave sleep once awake. And now the, the second experiment. On the maximal UI or a virtual simulation of non-dual awareness during wakefulness. If the physiological dynamics of PC were isolated during the during lucid dreamless sleep, which is the main um, goal of this research, and it has already uh, it is not in the uh, in the presentation, but it has already um, there are some hints also by a Chinese lab that they create they develop an experiment in order to track just the temporal dynamics of the hippocampus in order to like save past information and how this work in in present time no? in an ongoing process so if this so if if it's possible to isolate these dynamics it would be possible to track this behavior of the brain during non-egoic wakeful experience like the maximal ui in certain meditative and psychedelic states in which the sense of of the self and bodily awareness vanish so pure consciousness, uh, um, well, witnesses uh, the open uh, the open epistemic field in a contentless phenomenality. The signature of knowing has been called by Metzinger. Is it possible to become identical with the process of consciousness itself? Are there any concrete examples of phenomenality without intentional content? That that's also one of the important uh, things to be discussed. Are, uh, are selfhood and perspectivalness necessary conditions for phenomenality? And now the description, well, uh, yeah, the description of uh, the how it's going to be displayed, the uh, experiment. A uh, control hallucination, it, it's called the control hallucination that um, it has been also used this concept to define consciousness. I don't know if I agree, but the point here for the control hallucinations in, in, by means of a VR, I, I agree uh, using this concept. So a control hallucination of non-dual awareness with VR using, using a head-mounted display and synchronized multisensory inputs could enable us to research if it is possible to shift the UI in waking state to a non-dual awareness caused by the A epistemic agent model. Synchronous stimuli have been already correlated to cause, uh, cause self-identification with a virtual body based on the uh, research. Well, there are many, but here I'm just naming this, uh, the research by Blanke and Metzinger. The experiment will simulate body ownership uh, and agency with other types of embodiment until reaching full phenomenal self identification with contentless simulation in the point one of the virtual control hallucination with pure persons. Here is just a, a brief chart to, to describe how agency works. So we have uh, on the on top of the cognitive uh, first person perspective, this is the strong and the weak one. And the strong is the one we have normally in the everyday life and the weak one would be just the, the purely geometric geometrical fe feature that interacts 
with the with the phenomenal landscape that it's supposed also to vanish during uh, pure consciousness on the side of uh, embodiment we have well the embodiment um triggers the sense of uh, self-identification and self-location <laughs> so and um, finally just how the actual virtual uh, reality would will work so are uh, just these few steps so it's to simulate a phenomenal landscape in the air that contains a virtual repl replication of the candidates a forest surrounded by mountains a city geometrical and auditory patterns to determine the forms of alter embodiment a bodily, a bodily replication of the candidates animals movement 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 from the elements of leaves and water geometrical forms and darkness to synchronize sensory stimuli tactile auditory and visual with a responsive feedback from the physical reactions of the candidates coming from the movement of their eyes heart rate body temperature and electrical signals from the brain to make a bio available a subjective balance of the hallucination with with the movement of their eyes this feature will work as well for giving value to the degrees of virtual embodiment and here it's also how um, this works because the, the movement of the eyes has been also already correlated in the you know, in Busaki's research as the the one that en enables um, uh, attention and, and cognitive gain and abstraction. So, and the final features of the VR is to start with a virtual replication of candidates' bodies before the transformation of alter embodiments begins until reaching non-dual awareness and to finish with the same virtual replication in an approximate period of two hours, the virtual events will display from dual awareness and its dissolution through different types of embodiments in when and it's dissolution in non-duality sorry to duality again so it's duality non-duality and duality again. so to deliver a task a trip to the forest from the city to swim in the lake beneath the mountains and, and it's important to, to have a task because that will uh, control the focus of attention of the uh, of the candidates while the control hallucination will change the types of embodiment that they will experience and that the, and these type of embodiments is are when these types of embodiments are correlated to a particular type of uh, phenomenal landscape and uh, inputs that they will feel so to direct the attention of the candidates to certain elements in the phenomenal reproduction of reality in the achievement of of the particular task and simultaneously uh, forms, forms of subtler embodiment will emerge in a rhythmic process in which the transformation of the alter embodiment will be coordinated with direct attention to develop the changes in a continuous temporal experience. So and to change smoothly the simulation in order to make it real before and after the point one, the, the abstract phenomena will be triggered by geometrical patterns taken from realistic simulation of the landscape. Um, and well, I hear there are just there's more information about the types of embodiment and the neural correlates. So, but I will stop here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Julio. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can now move to the Q&A uh, section on the right and ask your questions to Julio. Yeah. Go ahead, Marco. Thanks. Hi, thank you for the talk. That was um, interesting. Oh, wait. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Thank you. Um, I, I gotta say, it was a bit complicated to fully track. So, so if I could just ask some clarificatory questions. So, so there was one experiment where it was like a um, participant is in dreamless, lucid sleep. Um, and you played some sounds, uh, and you 
what was it? You played some musical patterns or latched onto the slow wave peaks and then ask if they later would recall them, right? Yes. And uh, can you listen to me? Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. And then tracking the, the physiological dynamics. Okay. And so, and so, so what was the Yes. Uh, so what was exactly the purpose or the, the, the main question behind the experiments? And in relation to, to disentangle what it's called mental action and it's the ability which are the um, theoretically the the neural marker well the phenomena and neural markers of uh, epistemic self causation what makes you be what, <coughs> whenever you are in a cognitive state you have to to cause also whatever we think agency is is that we can create autonomously our so we can trigger our own cognitive states that it, do, it does not depend only on the dynamics with the uh, with the surroundings and yeah, uh, is that we can cause ourselves cognitive states that's what we are trying to disentangle but, but I'm a bit confused though, because um so, so first of all how does that experiment um, involve agency because I thought that minimal phenomenal experience would, would be without agency um, and I'm not sure how could you explain how the musical pattern recall would um, uh, connect to this uh, notion of agency and mental action okay the first one yeah that's that's a, that's a whole point obviously that's a big because in in a phenomenal sense in a subjective sense there's no there's no subject there's obviously but in a non-ontological sense, you are still there. Yeah, but 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 Do you I'm understand? Confused. But I'm confused. Like like like, are you assuming in that experiment that you won't see agency? But again, how does that relate to the recall of the musical patterns? How it's related, in the sense, in the first experiment that I show at the beginning, it was possible to correlate the the sounds in the peaks of the slow waves with a tendency to uh, to, to like to find uh, yeah to to guess in to guess better the the type of this of sounds and the correlations that they will that they listen while being in deep sleep so the thing is that they were supposed to be without consciousness do you know what I'm saying the, so they, this correlation happened uh, first, but perhaps I described the experiment, the first experiment so fast. No, so I also was very distracted, so don't blame yourself. And I, it's okay. So the thing is that in, in deep sleep, it's supposed that you are not there. Mm -hmm. So, and, but there are nonetheless brain waves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that th these two points are important. So during the peaks of the slow waves, mm -hmm they they um they put some sounds correlate like i know yeah, you, you as experimenter right like, like right. You, you you do that by design so so you know you're measuring the slow wave peaks and you're making sure that musical patterns are correlated with that right before uh, yeah but before it's it has to be correlated with a type of uh, of of musical sound that it's also correlated to cognitive. Not all, not every sound is correlated to cognitive uh, work. But but again, so, so I'm very sorry. I'm not sure if, if I'm misunderstanding something. Someone please jump in the chat or whatever. But, but but again, so so how does music? How does then mental action fit into this? And I'll be honest, I'm still kind of confused about the what you're actually yeah. doing by designing an experiment with the musical patterns and the slow sleep like. Anyways, yeah. No, no, yeah. Maybe the thing is that normally while doing experiments, they they have a, a, a complex set and within this set, they have the thing that they want to analyze. In this uh, type of methodology that we are using is we take uh, everything out, away and then through the, the minimal dynamics that can uh, be uh, analyzed, is that we are guessing the type of neural markers that this has. Wait, but how are you guessing the type of neural markers of 
well, first of all, neural markers. Which are the, the type of neural markers are, are arousal and the peaks of the slow waves and gamma oscillations. They are particular gamma, they are particular markers. It's not this is not to be confused. And there's also a particular type of uh, response. Oh wait, so 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 maybe I'm misunderstanding. So you're doing musical patterns, and you're asking the participant beforehand to somehow through mental action, dream and sleep, to 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 um, change their slow wave patterns so that they map onto the musical no, no, no. patterns. So some of them. No, 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 no. They listen to that, and afterwards uh, we ask that. But we have always two. We have a control group. Uh, so once the that, that were correlated with the peaks of the slow waves, and the other ones that were not correlated. Mm -hmm. And people with meditative and with without meditative experience, because it's supposed that people with meditative experience tend to be um, aware during deep sleep. And it also has been uh, analyzed in the experiments that I show at the beginning that people with a meditative experience uh, show in the EG uh, type of gamma oscillations, mm -hmm. which are not typical of deep sleep. No. So such type, such type of neural markers is that we is the things that we are uh, trying to to capture. So it's not only the type of brain waves, it's also the temporal dynamics that these have. It correlated with the type of uh, bodily reactions in general, because it's also important the, the movement of the eyes and the breath. So there are many other things uh, in, in relation to this. So whenever we, so once, so it's, here I just described the output of the experiment. I didn't I didn't describe how every single stream of the experiment is going to be created. So you you are right. There are many like pieces that. So first, which is to be correlated? So what type of uh, sounds are correlated with cognitive uh, with a cognitive state? So that's also 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 part of the of the questions but, but, but um, th then the second thing was like uh, yes. how how was this supposed to investigate mental action mm, because in in its pure form a mental action is the whatever en enables you to to show like to have a sense of effort so sense of a what sense of effort lucidity insight whenever you you say, ah, this is that, this, oh, you are trying to solve a mathematical problem or you, whatever you are doing. There is this sense of effort that enables you to be aware of such cognitive dynamics. It's mm -hmm. not purely the cognitive. So when, with this, we are not trying to tackle the, the, ob the object of cognitive dynamics, but the awareness of such cognitive dynamics. I don't know if you get that point. Yeah, I'm just, just still confused how mental action plays, like how is mental action investigated with that experimental setup? Um, yeah, the, for the, for the, by the very definition that I gave in the, so here it's, it's called attentional agency. Oh, right. So, so, so those experienced meditators would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're, you're assuming that they're actively um, attending. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, okay. yeah. I assume that they they are on purpose being. Uh, um, oh, and, 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 and the correlation with the musical patterns would be a marker of exactly that. Yes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, but good. No, thanks. It's it's good also these questions because uh, in allow me the possible going to give me the chance to to describe in a more fine grain. Great. Then I don't feel bad about asking the question. Says, and I feel better that I. <laughs> <laughs> then, then if no one else still has a question, then one other thing is just to point out. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if you've considered this, but, but there might be a bit of a mythological issue then. 
like, is it possible that you get the entrainments of slow wave sleep still to the musical signals? Because you, you again, like even when you're not conscious, um, the brain still has the ability to entrain to external stimuli or external patterns. Yes, no, no, that, that that's why uh, th there's the smell and there's the sound. Yeah, yeah, of course. Th that's why we or I designed the experiment based on on sound, for instance, because th that's a, a kind of a survival tool that mm -hmm. yeah. uh, evolution gave us in order to even while asleep we can wake up if yeah, there's, but, but, a there's a possibility that even then you you would get this entrainment effect even for the non-practitioners regardless of whether they have the uh dreamless lucidity maybe you could tweak it a little bit where you could have a trained conditioned uh response for the awareness of a particular musical pattern instead of simply the entrainment, because I'm not sure if you can disentangle the entrainment as a consequence of the consciousness or phenomenology uh, for versus normal entrainments. So maybe if you just add one small thing, you could increase the contrast that you would hope to find between the trained meditators and entrainments and the non-trained meditators and entrainments. And which could be? I mean, it's just one suggestion. You could, you know, just train literally in lucid, I mean, waking state, just train them to have an associ associated response to those musical patterns. For example, maybe you <clears throat> do the opposite or something, like like you uh, try to increase their awareness in the spaces between the notes, something like that. Something that wouldn't happen um, if mm. you wouldn't have no consciousness. Yeah, to emphasize, uh, that, that would be, a, I was thinking already to do some kind of thing like that with a third group. Because I would like that some of them uh, come without knowing any, also without. Ah, exactly. Yes, that's a good point. So, thank you, Marco and Julio. Um, yeah. We're going to thank you for your wonderful talk and thank you, Marco, for raising all these questions. We're going to take a five-minute break. So um, go ahead and have coffee.